Did you know that Mary Shelley lost her virginity on her mother's grave? <laughs> of course I did. I will be goth, but I will never be as goth as Mary Shelley. Writing a horror icon book, losing her virginity in a graveyard, which, might I add, the grave was her mum's. And also, that's how she learned to write as well. The UK is home to a number of different subcultures, from the mods and rockers of the 50s to the punk scene in the 70s, all the way to modern day witchcraft aka Wicca. Whilst most of the older subcultures have shifted into something completely different or disappeared altogether, one subculture is still striving strong and ever growing to the point of being recognisable in most first world countries. Goths. The goth subculture began to appear around the 1970s, and took some influence from other prominent subcultures at the time, namely the UK post-punk scene. It is arguably one of the most easily spotted group due to their dark clothes and eccentric makeup. They are mainly characterised by their black aesthetic and stereotypes, with a fixation on death and the macabre. However, this is only half the story. Goth culture actually stems from a music genre, Goth bands like The Cure, Joy Division, and Susie and the Banshees are known for gloomy lyrics and melodic vocals. Usually the songs will follow themes of existentialism or nihilism. However, over the years some bands have broken this trend by having the odd upbeat song. See, I Love Cats by Vision Video. Love cats, so much more. Lesbian Vampires from Outer Space by Scary Bitches. And yes, that, that is a real song. We're under attack from the upper quarter. Watch out for your sister, your mother and your daughter. What's the government doing? Nothing. It's a fucking disgrace. Lesbian Vampires from Outer Space. Though starting at its core with its unique music style, Goth has come far beyond their early beginnings in the underground punk scene. With gothic elements bleeding into the modern day alternative scene, more attention has been brought to both subcultures over the years. Gothic based stores, markets, nightclubs, people are content living their lives in public dressed head to toe in black. But what does it actually mean to be a goth? Is it the gloomy, depressing, Satan worshipping cult it was perceived to be during the Satanic Panic? Or is it a community like any other? Is it more than that? Honest answer? I don't know. But I do know someone that does. being goth mean to you? Goth to me means being accepted for who I am. I'm in a community filled with amazing people who just are weird and different and strange and that to us is normal and it's just a level of comfort that you get from it. Being goth just means being yourself really. AJ is a goth living in Leeds, West Yorkshire and they live their whole life as authentically goth as they can. They dress as a goth, their apartment is goth, they listen exclusively to goth music, and even the little ducky in their bathroom matches the gothic aesthetic. AJ has built a prominent internet following with over 20,000 followers on Instagram, mainly made up of fellow goths and occasionally the odd creepy weirdo. They even use their platform to shout out goth businesses and brands, further promoting the community they're involved in. Um, I never know what to do. I feel guilty that I don't have anything 
to give people back. I kind of hate the fact that I get so much attention just for posting pictures about my makeup. So in order to feel like I'm giving back and helping those who don't have as many followers as I do, I do Small Business Sunday when I remember to do it, which is I'll pick a small business, whether I have purchased from them or whether I've just had a good experience from them or whether they're just really cool people. And I'll end up posting about them, posting how cool they are, what they offer and just boasting them as much as I can because they are a small business. They need all the advertisement they can get. So I'm more than happy to give them the advertisement. That's, that's why I like doing it. Every single business I've worked with so far have been so pleasant. There's Black and Heart Apparel, who I do modeling for. I do t-shirts and they've got stickers and all sorts. I love them. Monica's, uh, can't be saying that. <laughs> Morticia's manicures, they're great. Um, there's also, who has it been? Kawaii Store and More from Ireland. They have awesome earrings, which are in my mess of a jewellery thing. My most favourite ones are of course these Ouija board ones, these planchettes. A Nocta Wingle. That's cool. <laughs> it's this one here. Oh, well, that's cute. I generally can't remember the name of the business. I will have to. I will have to get my, ama my amazing filmer to put it here so that way I'm not being a dick and not knowing the business because I feel really bad that I've completely blanked and forgotten the name. We'll, we'll have a smile at the camera and we'll just have a few small businesses that you've dealt with before just fly by. These are really cool. These are awesome businesses. Except that one, that one's weird. I'm kidding, I love that one. That one's great. <laughs> but one thing I like about you doing small businesses rather than like big brands and stuff, I mean, I, I don't, you can't always use a small business, as sad as it sounds, due to specific reasons, it could be money, it could be like time, reasoning. Sometimes the small businesses, sadly, are across the ocean and you have to pay so much for shipping, which isn't a bad thing if you really want to support them, but sometimes you can't always get it. But I really like it because you get letters and you get personalised um, thank yous from them, which I keep every single one that I ever get. Um, not that one. And it, it makes me so happy. I first started um, listening to the music when I was about roughly 16 or so. Um, it helped me through a lot of times. It was just different from what I heard before. And it was just the fact that I finally had people singing about problems that I was facing and feeling as well. And then around roughly about 20 or 19 years old, that's when I started embracing dressing gothic and being a bit different. And it truly felt like me when I finally started doing it. So would you say it's it's a big part of who you are now as a person? It definitely is. Without it, I don't know who I would be. I don't know how I would be myself. It's different and strange when I take off everything to look at myself in the mirror. I know who I am, but it feels more like me when I look like this and dress like this. Well, my most recent prized possession is, of course, this lovely poster. Signed by one of my favourite singers of my newest bands, of course, Vision Videos. It's so cool. What does it say? It says, stay strange. And it's a motto which I will live by, and a motto which I have had permanently tattooed on me forever. Is that his autograph? That is his autograph. I'm glad I got that. <laughs> I also have my, my second most prized position, of course, is my Elvira Monster High doll. The Skelector's Edition one, because I'm a huge fan of Elvira and Monster High, and the fact is, when they did that collab, my heart absolutely sunk, and I needed to get it immediately. Elvira's been an icon since I've been young, and uh, Monster High just made me feel like me, so I had to get it. Cassandra Peterson, aka Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, was the star of a local late night horror movie program called Elvira's Movie Macabre back in the 1980s and Elvira has been thrust into the public eye ever since. She is a staple in not only gothic and alternative cultures, but also within the mainstream pop culture. She even judged on the panel of RuPaul's Drag Race. Not a high bar, I'll admit, but still. 
This low cut dress wearing vampire mistress is as iconic as any icon has ever iconed before. And yes, that did give me a mini stroke trying to read that out loud. Uh, so you have a partner at the moment and how do they kind of feel about the, the goth stuff? Um, are they a goth themselves? Or? They're not a goth, but they don't mind. They, they, they don't care with how I dress and everything. It's They say to me that if I feel comfortable wearing it, then I'm going to wear it. So based on how you dress... Have you ever had any, like, harassment? Have I had any harassment? Of course I've had harassment. <laughs> the second someone sees someone dressing different in the street, whether it's because of my hair, because I'm wearing a belt with extra chains, or I've got a t-shirt where half a guy's face is missing, I'm going to get harassed. I've had people going about their days and then just immediately yelling out of a bus window, freak or weirdo or something, and it's just... I don't care how you dress. Why have you got to care how I dress? You know? But it makes me laugh. I just wish they'd get a bit more creative with it. I'm tired of hearing emo or Wednesday or the t- the typical when it's summer and I have my umbrella up. The famous comment, it's not raining. I'm aware it's not raining. But... Harassment is unfortunately far too common for those in the goth and alternative subculture. The idea of the other is viewed as wrong to some, and because of that they believe they have a right to insult, badger, assault, or even murder those perceived to be different. The most famous case of this in the UK is that of Sophie Lancaster. Sophie Lancaster, uh, like a lot of people in uh, in alternative communities or, or anywhere really, um, was a girl who chose to express herself um, in the way that she dressed uh, and the music that she likes to listen to, which again is, is very common amongst, amongst a lot of different people, not just in the alternative subculture. She had sort of a bright red and sort of dreadlocks at one point and she wore sort of very sort of uh, alternative and bright clothing. Unfortunately, um, along with the regular abuse that, that she used to receive when she was walking uh, in, the, in the park home uh, with her boyfriend, uh, she was attacked by, by a group of five, five lads. And I mean, these lads were only sort of 14, 15, 16 years old, and, and the, the extent of the attack on her physically and on her, her boyfriend as well um, were, were, were so horrific and so violent and so unprovoked um, that actually Sophie lost her life um, in, in the park that night. And it was a, a, obviously a huge, huge hit for, for her friends and family and the community and also her mother as well. A 15-year-old boy has been accused of kicking a woman to death because she was dressed as a goth. He denies murder. A jury heard how 20-year-old Sophie Lancaster was begging a gang of youths to stop beating her boyfriend when the teenager turned on her in a park in Bakeup in Lancashire. Um, And it was off the back of this, really, that her her mother, Sylvia Lancaster, knew exactly uh, the reasoning uh, why why she was targeting and it was just because of the way that she expressed herself and the way that she dressed it was completely unprovoked and that was recognized as well by the judge um who did the trial for the for the boys uh, who recognized it as being a, a hate crime like like any other like be, be one of race or religion her mother knowing this uh, decided to set up the the, the sophie lancaster foundation um and, and this is a, a foundation that has sort of three main uh, goals and one of those of course to create this uh, legacy for for sophie uh, the other one is to educate people so to go into schools uh, go into establishments um, and and try and teach people the importance of being tolerant towards however other people choose to express themselves It is okay to be whoever it is you want to be. Like, absolutely, that, that couldn't be more true. Like, you you do you and do it to the fullest and enjoy yourself and, and, and be embracing that because you're doing that, that other people may choose to do that differently and that's fine, you know, you choose to to express yourself however that is, with your fashion, with your music, whatever that is, and, 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 and be true to that and be true to yourself with it because that's really, really important. And I think different difference, if you can call it that, is interesting.
So if you wish to support the foundation, there are loads of different ways that you can do that. Uh, and we're, we're so appreciative of, of all the support that we get, no matter how big or small it may be. Um, just people taking out their time to think about us and think about people outside of themselves is just wonderful. So one of the ways people do it is just by simple fundraising and you can set up a fundraiser however you want to do it. Um, and you can donate the money through Just Giving or a platform like that. We are completely non-funded as well. so. We, we really do rely on um, on amazing people who, who take time out of their day to fundraise, but also um, those people who also buy our merchandise because we have a huge range of merchandise um, and that, that really helps us keep going. Um, so if you're ever at a festival um, that we're at, then make sure you try and find our little tent. Uh, it's, it's, it's the black tent and it's normally boiling weather outside. So we're normally inside uh, dying a little bit. But, uh, come and say hello, bring some ice um, and then invest in, in some really cool merch. Have you had any religious interactions based on how you dress? Uh, many, many religious interactions. Whether it's people commenting on posts that I put on where they say that I need Jesus or they direct message me where they say like, oh, Jesus will love you if you just, you know, took all that off and stuff like that. I've had uh, people in the streets um, saying to me that, you know, I'm a devil worshipper or something like that. I mean, I am a Satanist, but that isn't because I'm goth. It's because... Satanism's just it's just cooler, um, but no, every single time it's just sort of I let them talk, let them say what they want to say because it makes them feel better. I mean, I'm a Satanist and I don't push it on them. I don't push my beliefs on anyone, but if they want to do that and push theirs on me just because they need something to feel happy, I'm fine doing that. Can I ask what your um? view of Satanism is? Satanism is basically what Christianity sometimes tries to be. Not to bash them in a sense, but it's kind of lost its way, as in people will think that everything that you do is a sin and that you can't do anything, and it's just... I went to a um, very religious school, and they always talked about how Jesus loved you and how everything he did was a plan for you and everything, and just thinking that there were kids and other people that were suffering in the world i always questioned how is that part of his plan and satanism when i first read about it it's just a caring and accepting community they believe that do no harm but take no shit from no one be who you are dress how you want to dress accept everyone for who they are and what they believe in and don't push your agenda on anyone that doesn't want it. And that's that, that's truly what I like about it. It's just everyone's accepting and everyone's different. Everyone's looking out for each other and they truly care about people. There is a certain stereotype about the Christian church. This is something that comes from the outspoken types like Westboro Baptist Church or videos online of preachers denouncing homosexuality or feminism as morally evil. However, when I tried to find evidence online for this documentary, I actually found very little linking Christianity to the gothic subculture. I admit, I even tried to bait some responses by posing as a stereotypical pearl clutcher or mum's net, but I was immediately IP banned due to people not believing such opinions could be real. This is a good thing. It proves that the vocal minority are just that, vocal. Just because someone shouts the loudest doesn't mean they're the smartest person in the room. <coughs> Enon. One religious website, though, had a whole blog post about goths being at risk of the devil's influence. One of the few I found. The devil will use anything to get his claws into a person's soul. Goths, who are already flirting with the darker side of life, are prime targets for the evil one. But... Upon reflection, I decided that if I couldn't find the information online, maybe I should just go right to the source.
what does the Bible say about the concept of the other? Um, I think uh, the Bible says an awful lot about um, people who are different from oneself, um, culturally, um, ethnicity, um, different parts of the world, different um, social backgrounds. Um, the Bible says that, and this is right at the very beginning of the Bible, it says that everybody who exists, everybody who's created, is created in the likeness of God and are therefore equal, um, irrespective of difference. And that uh, because we're all made in the image and likeness of God, then we are one human family. And um, distinctions are not, well, we all have red blood. Canon Paul Maybury is Rector of Leeds City, and I spoke to him at Leeds Minister, openly and honestly, about the plight of the other within the Bible. Would you welcome someone who perhaps looked more alternative or gothic into your church as a, pa a patron, is that the word? Um, as a worshipper or yeah. as, as a visitor or as, yeah, either. Um, personally, certainly, yes, and I believe that um, the people who call this place their spiritual home, um, that they too would welcome anybody. Um, and one of the interesting things, I think, about people who present in an alternative way is that um, they um, make it kind of obvious um, that they are, are different from others because they're choosing to, to be like that and because the Bible and the Christian faith um, says quite deliberately welcome the other, welcome those who are, are different then those who choose um, to have alternative lifestyles of whatever kind and to dress differently uh, and alternatively, um, whatever that means. Um, some people think, I, I dress alternatively um, and I, I just call it my uniform. Um, but it's, it's, it's alternative to somebody. Um, but we would uh, I definitely wel welcome um, those, those people. Um, as generously and as openly as we possibly can. Upon agreeing to sit with me for this interview, Rector Paul did stress the fact that his branch of Christianity is just one small part of a much bigger puzzle. All religions and all churches within the Christian community have their own views on every subject. No one religion looks at the holy books the same. So his views are just that, his. But still, it was nice to hear somebody who is a face for a form of religious church speak so openly and be so welcoming to a community that feel like they're not welcome there. Uh, the person that we've been speaking to who is goth has mentioned that they receive a lot of religious backlash based on how they dress. Uh, one comment that they did show me was that they were told that to dress like that means they're giving into a darkness. I just wondered if I could get your thoughts on that. Yeah, um, I, I, I know uh, Christians who um, are, are goths. Um, um, I've been um, in Whitby uh, at the time uh, where uh, a large number of goths were, were there. Um, I, I, I don't think that there's um, any real correlation between, um, what am I trying to say, I don't think there's any real correlation between how somebody dresses and um, how they necessarily believe or behave. Um, I, I'm sure a sociologist or a psychologist might come up with some kind of correlation between uh, the, these things, but essentially uh, I believe that they're, they're different just because I choose to dress in a particular way doesn't mean to say I believe a particular thing uh, or I behave in a particular way. 
Um, hence, you, you can't tell a Christian walking down the street because they don't dress, there's no such thing as dressing like a Christian um, or looking like a Christian. Um, there is something about behaving like a Christian and believing like a Christian. Um, and uh, Christians uh, come in all shapes and sizes uh, from all kinds of uh, different, different backgrounds um, and different shades as, as well. And it might well be that within the Christian church, um, from um, the, the different streams and expressions of faith, that there are variations in, in belief and variations in, in practice, but at, essentially at the heart um, of the Christian faith is an acceptance and a welcome to all. I met up with AJ again to go around the Gothic market in Leeds with the intention of having them show me around and giving some closure to this documentary. But as we went around, I realised the true scale of the Gothic and alternative subculture today. The place was packed full of people and a number of small businesses showing off their products. So, instead of trying to make up my own conclusions as to why alternative and goth events, visibility or even just the community as a whole is so important, I decided to ask the people who would know best. I think it's really important for people to know that there's other people out there like them and for us all to meet different alternative people and um, realise who, you know, be your own self um, and meet like-minded people. I think that's really great. I think it's also a really good group for anyone else that's maybe learning about it, like and it's a good way to educate people. Um, just to show that everyone is different and like everyone can be inclusive like regardless of who you are. Um, yeah so we are Alt Ruin Clothing, uh, we take sustainable so organic cotton and ethically sourced garments and we hand dye and print them ourselves. Everything is vegan and um, gender neutral always. Uh, we want everything to be inclusive of everyone and everything to be more sustainable and long lasting so everything is really soft and um, yeah. Because it celebrates alternative culture and alternative lifestyles, which is something that needs a lot more of a platform to be. Here are my candles. <laughs> Based on myths, legends, dark history, grim nature, anything unusual, I will try and make it into a scent. So we are at the moment at the Gothic Festival and there's a lot of people and it's a really nice atmosphere because you get to see a lot of different styles music being played so you get to listen to more genre as well um, yeah i think it brings other communities together and it makes sure that like people of all ages have you know a great experience getting to know what being goth is like and you know there's a lot of elder goths a lot of younger people and it's a safe space for everyone you know and it, it brings everyone together so i think it's really important to keep these events going especially in places like Leeds where it's quite art driven, you know, bringing goth into the community more gives people more space to feel free and, you know, especially with younger people. Younger people, like, find it a lot harder to, um, like, be goth around family sometimes. Um, so making spaces where the community acts as a family is, is really important. And I wish I had that when I was younger, so these events make sure that people can have that, you know? Yeah. So we do our event called Boys Don't Cry. Um, also helps me a lot with managing. Um, it's a 16 plus inclusive night for younger generation. So we don't disadvantage queer community for obviously younger people. Um, here it is. The next slide is prom, golf prom, come along. question if you could say anything to pre-goth baby AJ what would you say to them you're not broken and you're not wrong you are a freak but in a good way and there's going to be people out there that feel the same as you and are the exact same and you will find them one day and you will one day truly love yourself and it does get better that's it. Well done. So much more than